you're looking at some place and you're like, that would be really interesting. Actually, like, change like this. What the we had clear role conflicts and every player in the team knew it. What we do must be taught to the soon. If there is someone to blame, it should be me. We will have like the oldest lineup in the scene almost. We are going to win tournaments. We have to be on the top, right? My name is Eric Wendell and I'm the director of eSports at NIP. I joined NIP back in uh, 21, August 21. Just a few months after Device uh, joined NIP. Um, it was an interesting time, right? And uh, there were some tournament wins coming around the corner. There was a, a Stockholm major uh, right around the corner after I joined. I really loved NIP from childhood, you know, being Swedish uh, person myself and uh, always been following NIP. The idea of bringing me uh, into NIP was basically to be Jonah's kind of right hand on operational topics. So I did that for you know about two years ish, um, and then because of you know changes internally, I got the opportunity to take over the esports department on not only the operational side but now also the kind of strategic side. My first move I made back in then August uh, September was to to hire Bjorn uh, Threat Paris as the GM of CS because that's one thing I do not have that deep CS knowledge that's necessary to to make these calls. We decided directly when we took over that transparency was going to be key. We were super transparent with the players and they were super professional about it. So Bjorn basically told them, I think just a few weeks in, that we're going to make changes because at that point, this is August, September, right? We had clear role conflicts and every player in the team knew it. First, you need to start with the foundation, uh, the culture within the team, and that everyone sort of gets along. I mean, that, that goes a little bit hand in hand. And when I rejoined NIP now, uh, I could tell that that didn't work uh, in the current lineup. When you're going to change a player, there's a lot of steps to be done. Obviously, you need, you need to have a replacement for the player you're, you're changing. Uh, you need to make sure the, the roles match. You also need to make sure you're actually able to get the player that the player wants to join, that is financially feasible, marketing-wise that it's feasible. There is a lot of things that needs to be right. The coach in, in our case will be involved in a lot of the player changing process because there is no way for me to have a coach that I can put responsibility on if he himself doesn't believe in the team he's in. I mean, I like that. I think it should be my, my head on the line when, when it doesn't uh, go well with the team. So, I mean, I don't mind it. Uh, if there is someone to blame, it should be me. I mean, first of all, we looked for a leader. Uh, I think that was uh, the first thing we, we looked at. Just get something fresh in. I mean, it's nothing bad with Hampus and all that, but I also think that it was time for him to move on. Uh, and I think we agreed on that, both me and him. Even going back to the end of 2022, when we went international, Alex was one of the names I, I, I was looking at. Um, then I moved away from NIP for almost a year. Well, 2023, and during that period of time, I was uh, talking to some teams for head coach positions, uh, and I saw that a lot of those teams were having Alex on their lists as well, um, making him an even more interesting uh, prospect. And also, what really makes him interesting to me is that he's been in Movie Star Riders for such a long time, overperforming to the players he's had, limiting himself to only Spanish players. And that made, was very, very impressive. Uh, we started talking to him early September, and he was actually looking like we were closing out something that early. Uh, what happened then was, uh, what could happen in this uh, world of esports is uh, Heroic started to making some moves uh, that creates a lot of interesting opportunities for us. So of course, you're looking at some players and you're like, that would be really interesting. Um, Bjorn was talking around and asking a lot of, you know, what, what's out there and what does it look like. And we had some very advanced conversations with Kadian for the position, uh, who's obviously a more seasoned uh, tier one IGL than Alex. Obviously, Alex understood this. So if you get Kadian, you bring an opera in, then you also have to remove your current opera, Hedrick in our case. So that would create another challenge. Uh, and we're really happy with Hedrick, right? We really wanted to keep working with him. So if you bring Alex in, he's not only you know a great IGL and also 
having that energy, which was an important part for us. Getting the energy part was important, and both Alex and Kadian is bringing that to the table. Uh, but something really interesting with Alex as well is that he's been really good in bringing the best out of his operas. And that is something that was also very interesting for us, being like, all right, what can this guy do with, with Hetrick? How can this guy help a young, talented opera like Hetrick to get even better? And in the end, uh, we decided to go with Alex, and we're super happy about that. To uh, summarize, you know how yesterday evening it was a bit grim, we were getting Alex until uh, January, it changed again. So, and now talk to you as well. We talked mm -hmm. about it yesterday. Uh, Edu talked to movies writers for like three hours. Uh, they sorted out Alex is not free to go after a game he has tomorrow. So, last game of movies writers is tomorrow, and then he's free to do whatever with. Oh, actually? Actually, like it changed like this. What the? Yeah, that's what I was called yesterday because I was like, you never know in esports, and here we are no. 12 hours later. I mean, other than that, uh, I had a, had a long chat with Daniel yesterday. We had a long chat for us. You, me, uh, Haste, Daniel, with yeah. the, about the lineup. Daniel spoke with Patrick. He is excited to start again. For rest attack, it was basically we needed a guy that is going to play the anchor and, and, and lurk positions and also do it very well. Because the issue was that rest has been playing them, and I don't think he should have done that. Like everyone seems very excited to get going, and it's st still, still not 100% with Brolan config. We're leaning towards config. Well, so the sugi, this is what we do. We must be taught to slut some sugi. Yeah. And it's the world's worst decision. We, like, I think we stutzed them all down three times in the game for the first and last game. We will see. Det är ju, vi måste ju bestämma oss snart, eller jag måste bestämma oss snart. If we bring uh, Wicked Krelle, we will have like the oldest lineup in the scene almost. Which is like, at this point, you sort of have to, there will always be some pros and cons to everything. So yeah. in general, I don't really care about age, to be honest. And if the effect we want is to, just to be in the best position to actually continue building in six months or one year, right? Mm -hmm. Then I don't think it matters that much about the age. At this point, it is going to be uh, Brolan who becomes benched. So this first transfer window of CS2, uh, I'd say it's a bit different. Uh, I'm so old that I lived through the CS uh, 1.6, the CSGO. Right? Some players make uh, uh, the transitions better than others. So. This window is kind of high risk, high reward in the sense where like you could go all in and get players now, but you are not 100% sure they're going to make the cut. At the same time, there's going to be a lot of players that's going to come out of nowhere, or rather players that maybe have been at a decent level, that will just make the transition into CS2 much better. Uh, thus, it, it, it's sort of a transfer window where you have to be a bit careful. You said before the start that you want to look and see to what young players are up and coming, right? Then it's yes. perfect to have a team that is ready to slot a young guy in whenever. Yeah, uh, I, I even yes, told uh, Daniel Very good point. That, I, that I will prioritize young ninjas more than I have in the past, because yeah. uh, especially the start of CS2, because I honestly think that's going to be way more important. Yeah. So in that mind, I'm actually sort of almost looking towards the next major already, because I, I think you have to have that mindset. We had a tournament now just a few weeks ago here in December uh, where the top rated player was Donk, right? You know, 16 year old, a few months ago no one heard about him and now he's the hottest uh, uh, prospect in, in CS2. So that's a good example of someone that, you know, you probably wouldn't know about a few months uh, back, now we do. And there's going to be more of these players coming up, right? If you look back on kind of the investors and the people that put money into NIP and the CS team, uh, they want NIP to be the best as well. If, if Bjorn and I would really push for it, we could probably get the money for a superstar signing right now. Um, and I think we've seen this in the past. I mean, we, we did some, it's been like device, it's been brawl and all these were big signings, right? Uh, some of the biggest signings of that time. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no, uh, no one is afraid of making those signing in the, from a financial point of view, but it has to be the right time. The timeline is pretty clear. January 25, you have to be top competing. There's no shortcuts. There's going to be ranking points and qualifiers only. That's the way you stay on the top. That's when we need to be, you know, being on the very top, have the best players, have everything working out. Right now, we're working 
we're, we're in the beginning of that journey, right? The beginning of me and Bjorn taking over. Uh, we're really happy with the place we have right now. Everyone is really working you know, their, their hardest. Um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, there's, there's a possibility that the place we have right now will be some of the best places in CS2. That would be great, right? That would be the, the best solution. Um, but if that is not, then of course, we would look into after the RMR major, there will be transfer windows and we'll see what we do at that point. That's when you could spend money on a superstar signing. Because NIP, the goal, and that has to be very clear, it's not a goal to be, yeah, we're gonna have some good players, we're gonna be in some tournaments. We are going to win tournaments. We have to be on the top, right? The pressure I put on myself, not the players, on myself, is I wanna have something going and that I feel proud of the performance of the team in 12 months time. It's not having franchise league, not, not having that safety, but rather you have to perform quite well at all times. Uh, will put a lot of teams in check and I, I do find a challenge like that exciting.